Remember when you were a kid and you'd dig around the pantry or cabinets for food and constantly felt like there was nothing to eat? So you'd bring this up to your mom, whose response was typically something like, what are you talking about? There's plenty of food in the kitchen. What your dumb 12-year-old brain meant was there wasn't anything good to eat, like pizza rolls or ramen noodles. You know, food with zero nutritional value that requires little to no effort to prepare. Whereas your mom was referring to shit like raw potatoes and cans of vegetables and that old ass box of shake and bake. If you've had a similar experience, then you probably know how that feels. And if you've ever played PUBG and spent any time at all looking through their in-game store, then you've probably felt that same exact feeling again. What if PUBG didn't waste your time and effort from playing the game? Let me explain what I mean. If you're familiar with League of Legends at all, then you'll undoubtedly be aware of their in-game economy and its two forms of currency, one being Riot Points and the other being the Blue Essence. Riot Points, or RP, which is purchased with real-world money, are designed with the purpose of purchasing in-game items like cosmetics and even champions. This works really well because these purchases do absolutely nothing to increase a player's chances of winning, but it's meant only to enhance the experience of the game. Even the ability to purchase champions doesn't actually change the game in any way. It just gives you more characters to play with. Sure, some may be more powerful than others at times based on the current meta, but the ability to win is still placed solely on the player's skill and performance. The second form of currency, which is the Blue Essence, are accrued over time by completing matches and even reward you with bonuses with things like the first win of the day or having a particularly good game. These can also be used to purchase champions from the store, as well as a few other additional things, but the larger cosmetic items are still firmly locked behind that Riot Point paywall. So how does this relate to PUBG and the ways in which they handle their economy? Sure, they have cosmetic items that can only be purchased with real world money as well as a loot box system, which I'll address later, that can be purchased with BP. But honestly, this feels shorthanded and disingenuous to the players. I say this because with League, the most influential purchases you can make as a player within the game is by purchasing any or all of the champions. The fact that League remains a game that can be fully unlocked, if you will, without ever spending a dime is pretty extraordinary to me, and I appreciate as a player having the ability to expedite this process with real money should I see fit. So what does PUBG offer in return to their players? Well, they don't actually have champions to unlock, so the only real meaningful purchases is the cosmetic items. That said, we are starting to see strides in the right direction by offering players the option to spend their BP on in-game items, but... Herein lies problem number one. They give you the ability to spend BP on cosmetics, but don't give you the option. Say you only had so much BP and wanted to unlock several of these cosmetic items. Then, you better hope that you can grind out enough playtime to accumulate the BP necessary to purchase these items. Otherwise, whatever time exclusivity they operate under may leave you having missed out on those items. Which, I'd like to point out that I don't have a problem with timed exclusive content, but locking it behind an arbitrary paywall is rather frustrating for some who may not have had the opportunity to play and earn those items. Problem number two, crates. These need to go. Here's the problem I have with the crate system. Most of them aren't actually free. Sure, we have some basic bitch packages that don't cost anything, but most of the time, the game hangs this big dangling carrot over your head with all this BP, and it's like, oh hey, wanna spend some of those sweet battle points on some stuff that you could maybe earn, but probably won't? It just feels really shitty to earn all these points, pump them back into the game, only to have it spit out a bunch of shit I now have to spend real money to earn, maybe. It doesn't make me feel like my time invested is being rewarded in meaningful ways. I know it's been said by plenty of other people, but honestly, it does kind of feel greedy. So what's the solution? Well, I'm glad you asked. The solution to me seems fairly simple. Give us options. It's obvious that every cosmetic item in the game has a value attached if the now defunct economy for these items outside the game were any indication, so I say let's just stick to that. A dirty ass white t-shirt? 500 BP or 99 cents. Uh, the dope ass trench coat with a hood? 15,000 BP or $10, I don't know, I'm just throwing out numbers, but you get the point. Let's just get rid of the crates entirely and open up the ability to purchase any of the cosmetic items as we see fit. I honestly wouldn't even care if some of the prices got inflated a bit, just as long as we had the option to purchase these items with the points that we as gamers have earned. As far as the exclusive skins and organization stuff, I'm perfectly happy leaving those as they are. As fans of those streamers or teams, we should absolutely pay money for these items, 
if the money is being used to directly support those organizations or individuals. But if you're just going to have silly hats or red leather cocktail dresses, then give me the option to use either BP or real money to buy them. I get that this game needs to make money, but for starters, it's already behind a $30 paywall. Some other games, like League of Legends or Fortnite, don't have that at all. Yet, they can encourage their players to spend money on their shit in-game because of the value proposition presented to them. For someone like myself who played League of Legends for 7 years, I have no problem throwing a few bucks riots away from time to time because of the value that game has provided me over that time. And on the topic of supporting streamers and organizations, I have a pretty big problem curbing the support of those people to a single, momentary point of time. For starters, I couldn't have been more excited to see Chaco Taco finally get some in-game skins and gear because I have long supported his channel and respected his place within the community. But what about a new player who just now gets into the game? Suppose you get into the game because of a popular Twitch streamer like Chaco, buy the game, and soon discover that he once had in-game cosmetic items that you can no longer purchase. Hell, suppose you were like my friend who went on vacation and by the time he came back, the window to buy these items was already closed and gone forever. My point is, I believe some of these in-game items should just exist in perpetuity. I.e. Chaco's parachute or barrel skin or Wacky Jackie's snapback or the VSS skin. It makes wanting to support these creators in-game almost impossible outside of the arbitrary windows of availability. Now, my tinfoil hat theory is that there's some sort of limitations within the game that doesn't allow for this volume of available items to be purchased. If that's the case, then I believe a rework or an overhaul of the in-game store is in order. Now, if that isn't the case, then I and many others would like to know the answer as to why. Why are these things only available once and never again? Why don't all of your PUBG partners who you've created in-game t-shirts for have to not exist? What possible reason could there be to place restrictions on supporting the people who help support your game? Lastly, I want to touch on a couple of other ways I feel PUBG could increase its overall value proposition for its players by way of progression unlocks. I realize that we've seen small glimpses of this with things like weapon challenges and charms, but outside of the charm system, all of these other progression reward systems only exist within the exclusive windows of time. I get wanting to incentivize players to use weapons they may or may not be using by providing them skins to unlock, but why doesn't this just exist for every weapon all the time? Why add unnecessary hurdles for your players to navigate just to get something for a weapon that they will barely even use in the first place? A game like Call of Duty is a shining example of how something like this should work, by providing tiered unlocks through either time used or challenges completed. You give your players proper rewards for how they choose to play your game. PUBG has the makings for an incredible gamer experience, but I feel it's being wasted on these outdated and misguided business models that truthfully need to be reconsidered. I have absolutely no issue with their inclusion of the battle passes because, at least to me, I feel like I'm being rewarded for my time and accomplishments within the game. Even at $10 a pop, this doesn't phase me really because I know damn well I'm going to get my $10 worth. But for everything else the game has already established, it just feels like I'm that 12-year-old kid again looking through the kitchen and not finding anything worth eating. I just feel like this is a simple enough fix that would encourage players to put more time into something if they felt that their efforts were being more valued on the back end. By giving players meaningful choices with their earnings, they feel more appreciated and free to invest in something that is investing back in them. Who knows, PUBG might actually make more money if the players were given the choice to invest either their time or decide for themselves how much that time was worth.